inside my bedroom it's a part of a larger room fit project that I'm working on but today I'm just going to show you the steps of how I made this cool little floating desk and also it has a little secret but I want you to stay tuned and you'll see what that is but before I get into the steps of how I made this desk I'm going to go back and show you the update of what my rose bed project is looking like right now so guys this is the updated look of the rose bed project as you can see over there the Indian shots of my hibiscus have sprung up beautifully filling out the area my roses here sprung beautifully a lot of them bloomed and they dried off and they're still budding again to bloom all over again and look guys my lawn it has sprung back beautifully beautifully i tell you there are still a few little stubborn areas but they are coming along quite nicely and yes i don't know if anyone noticed the little melon plant that was in the corner there in the video but yes this is what it looks like now run all over the land yes and there's even a little tiny melon on it yeah there are a few all over the place but i can't find them right now but yeah this is what the progress looks like there it has gotten a bit brown so hence the reason why i added the sulfate to it to help it to spring back green and lush like this little corner over here yeah i want to get it nice and fluffy just like that so that's the update guys that's what it looks like so i didn't waste my time after all so yeah this is my sulfate fertilizer so I'm going to add to the Zaza grass. Yeah, it look like this sometimes. Sometimes it look um, a bit lighter in color or almost white. Look almost like sugar sometimes. But yeah, this is what I'm going to add to it. Make it look nice and pretty, you know. Okay, so the application process for the sulfate is a simple two-step process. One, just take a handful of the sulfate. Two, just sprinkle over the area. Just sprinkle until you cover the entire area that you're trying to fertilize and that's it. Okay, so now that you're all caught up with what I did with my rosemary project and where it is now, I can get into this build and show you how I did this cool little floating desk in the nook of my bedroom. I don't know where all of this came from, it just appeared there but it just goes to show you that it can hold a lot. This is the desk isn't playing around. Alright? I have a monitor here, my laptop here, and some books in the corner there. And it still isn't even warping. It's level as crazy. And let me show you that secret that I've been keeping from you. I have a little secret storage compartment here that you wouldn't even know was there. And that's one of the cool little parts about this desk. You just can't run out of storage space in your house. So it's cool when you have a little secret storage section in your house. So now let's get into this build. Alright guys, so I'm about to start my build of this floating desk. And as you can see, these are my tools that I use, my tape measure, my pencil, my combination square, my T-square. This is what I've used now to draw my cut lines. As you can see, it's already there. That's my 1x12 board here. My 2x4, that's going to form a part of the rack. It's already marked. And this piece of 1x12 is going to be the side panel, one side panel, and the front panel. As you can see, I've labeled them. This is the F for the front panel and the X for the side panel. Guys, it's good to label your stuff so you don't get mixed up, cut the wrong thing or 
strike a line through something put the wrong piece in the wrong place it's great to just label it so i'm gonna do some cutting now you can see this long piece that's gonna be a part of the top and bottom of the floating desk all right so i'm gonna do some cutting now guys all right Alright, so I know some persons may be looking and wondering what am I doing with this combination square? So what I'm actually doing is using the straight edge of the combination square as a guide to help me when I'm using the circular saw to make straight cuts. Alright guys, so these are all my cut materials, my top and bottom panel, side panel, front panel, and the rack these four pieces of two by four are going to form the rack that's going to be the support for the desk all right so let's put together the rack and get it installed inside now. all right guys so this is what the rack is going to look like i just pre put them together i haven't screwed anything or drilled anything as yet so this is what's going to look like it's the dimensions are going to be two by two feet by three feet as it would say in the description below along with the list of materials that i'm gonna use but i'm still gonna tell you a few of the materials that i'm using and tools right now so i have a little trick that i use with this 3 8 speed bit i don't have a countersink bit so what i'm gonna do in order to get the screws flush with the wood is just start it with this and drill a small pilot hole just below the surface of the wood and I'll get the screws flush with the wood. I'm also gonna use this screwdriver bit along with my drill and the wood bit. Three and a half inch wood screws. I need as much support as I can get for this as well as four inch concrete screws because these walls are tough and I need this to have as much support as possible. So come with me guys, let me put together this rack so you can see what's happening oh as well as i'm gonna use my combination square for testing of continuous squareness because i don't want this to be lean at all so this is what the pilot hole that i made with the spade bit looks like as you can see it's not all the way through because that would be too big it's just beneath the surface so by the time the screw goes in it's going to be flush with the face of the board all right so that's what's going to happen Alright guys, so this is what I wanted to show you with the spade bit. I got the hole, well at least the screw to be beneath the surface of the, the wood. So it's more, it's flush in a sense. So this is going to be the backboard that's going to be on the wall. So I don't want any unlevelness on the wall. So I needed to get the screws beneath the surface of the wood. So that's what i i use the spade bit to do that and i'm going to continue using the spade bit given as i said i didn't i don't have a countersink bit to help when i'm drink, drilling my pilot holes to get the screws flush with the surface of the wood so that's the little technique i'm using right now until i can get my hands on a countersink bit to get the screws flush with the wood all right all right guys so this is the completed rack fully screwed up and and all now so time to head inside get some measurements up and attach this to the wall all right 
<laughs> Alright guys, so this is the little nook that I want to put my desk in. Uh, so right now I'm going to strike some lines, do some measurements and get a levelless so I know where I'm going to put this rack. Alright? So I'm all done now guys, so the uh, average height of a workbench for a desk is about 30 to 35 inches tall. It depends on the height of the person as well as if a, a person likes to work standing up. Well, I like to work sitting down, so I have my height of my desk at 30 inches. So I'm, it's time now for me to install this rack. Alright, so guys, I have my rack here. And it's time to install it. I had already did the same method with the spade bit and the wooden drill bit and made pre drilled holes for the rack. So, this is what I'm going to use to mark the wall before I do my drilling. Alright? In this section, I'm going to be using the rack as a guide to mark the area where I'm going to do my pre drilled holes for my concrete screws. So, I'm just going to insert the drill bit through the rack and then mark the area with the drill. Alright guys, so it's time to drill now. Alright, I have the drill in hand. And as you can see, I have a little sliver of painter's tape on the drill bit. I got this little trick from my friend DIY Huntress. I learned that using this tape, I can mark how deep I want to drill. Because I don't want to bore through the entire wall. I just want enough room, a pilot hole for the screw to go into. So this will tell me when to stop drilling. Alright guys, so let's get drilling. So right from the drilling of the pilot holes, right into the installation of the rack. So as you can see there, I'm just driving in the screws straight through the pilot holes and into the wall where I had drilled my pilot holes as well. I uh, had a little issue with some of the screws. They were being stubborn a little like me. I guess I got a taste of my own medicine. But after some coercing, they all went in and the rack was secured to the wall. Alright guys, so now I'm ready to prep my top and bottom panels. And as you can see, I already went ahead and marked some screw holes as well as label them again to know which is top from bottom. And I'm gonna make the desk two feet in depth. So I'm gonna need two pieces of this one by 12 board here to make the top part of the disc and also two more to make the bottom part of the disc so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna do some sanding and some planing to get these boards ready to be painted all right guys so come with me on this journey and I'm gonna do this old school with a hand plane and sandpaper so this is gonna be a lot of work guys let me tell you this process was a very, very, very long process. I time lapsed it because it took me more than an hour to plane and sand these four panels. Jano, I swear to you, it was such a painstaking process. I don't want to do it again, but until I get my hands on an electric sander, this is what I'm going to have to do. This is going to be my life every woodworking project that i'm gonna have to take on this is gonna be my life judge <laughs> no it's not gonna be easy but the guys gotta do what the guys gotta do so guys i'm almost at the end i'm about to do some painting now and i'm gonna paint with my rustoleum semi-gloss white spray paint 
I got this from the DIY store Jamaica. Trust me, great service. You guys need to try them out. You can find them on Instagram as well. All right, so let's go, guys. We're gonna do some painting. So guys, let the assembly begin. I'm assembling and I left the drill outside. Okay, so that's one panel down, three more to go. <clears throat> Ooh, it's like playing hide and seek under there. Okay guys, so I made a boo-boo, I guess. Um, I put on the third panel and installed some roller catches. And I just realized that I want to tell you guys about this wedge that I had to make. I turned around and I realized that I didn't turn on the camera. So you didn't see any of that. But I'll show you <laughs> what that is. And why I had to make that, make this, you know, in that sec. Oh. Alright guys, so this is the roller catch that I installed. I installed one here and also one right there. Alright, so that is to catch the door on the front, that secret door that no one will know that's there. Yeah, it's the catch it that's there. Alright. And as it relates to this wedge now, I was forced to create this wedge to fit in this gap right here because the wall isn't square. This corner right here isn't square. So my boards are cut square and straight, but the wall isn't straight, so there will be a gap in there. Alright, so I'm gonna just slip this wedge in there, glue it down good and proper, and everything will be nice and dandy again. Alright, so there it is, guys. Uh, the wedge is in and it's all snug to the wall now. Alright, so after the unfortunately, the paint is still a bit wet, so what I'm gonna do after is the lines as well as the screw holes. I'm gonna just put some putty in it, some wood filler, fill it out, sand it down, and then just dab a little paint on it, and everything will be good as new again. All those screw holes will be gone. So guys, this is the aftermath of my chisel work. I don't have a jig or anything to cut the hole for the concealed hinges that I'm gonna install for this trap door on the front of the desk but so I was forced to use a chisel and it got the job done not as clean but it got the job done nonetheless so I'm gonna varnish this piece now and when it dries screw it up and that will be it so here it is guys all complete and put together that's it that's the end of this assembly and to think i turned this chaotic space into this less chaotic space with my own two hands i feel so proud of myself um i haven't done woodwork in years and i took on this project trying to create something out of nothing for my room and it turned out 
way better than i expected so guys um if you like what you see just drop me a comment down below let me know what you think uh it's well received and much appreciated if you have any tips or advice that you can give yeah it's also well received so don't be afraid to just drop me a, drop me a comment and let me know what's going on all right guys so thanks for the love thanks for the support and please remember to like share and subscribe to my page for more projects from royal scapes and always remember guys nothing defines your success but you